Can we give uh, Nat and Sally a round of applause there, please? <laughs> now, I mentioned that a well-bred dog will always want to bring sheep towards us. And when I refer to livestock today, um, I'm referring to sheep, goats, cattle, anything that a farmer might make some money on from their property. Obviously, we're going to work sheep today. <laughs> so there's different ways to move livestock around. So livestock have what we call a flight zone around them, like a bubble, if you may. So we ever have a balloon, we just tap the balloon between our hands. We want to go this way, it comes out our left hand. We want to go the other way, it happens out right. So it's no different with our dog. All we do is manipulate, we manipulate that flight zone to shift our stock around the paddock. See they move off me there? So the first way we move livestock is through presence. What does the dog look like? Has anybody ever watched a movie with a scary dog? Was it white and fluffy and this big? It was big, it was dark, it looked scary and intimidating, right? So a white dog or a lighter coloured dog? They actually, the sheep actually might draw to that dog, so they actually don't find it a bit frightening, right? There's no reason to move off it. A darker dog, more likely that they're going to move over, move off it. Then we've got walk-up force. That's where a dog walks into that bubble, and he, and he places the dogs to come forward. Now, our farmers are paid by how heavy their animals are when they want to sell them. So if we've got animals that are running everywhere, the farmers, they're losing weight, the farmers are losing money. If they're stressed, they're losing weight, the farmers are losing money. Right, so we want to move our sheep with as less stress, stress as possible. So we can use bark. As dogs that run around barking, <laughs> they tend to upset stock a lot. Right? And we don't want that. But we can use bark as a tool. Okay? Mm -hmm. The absolute last way to move stock is a quick bite of the nose. These sheep are about 90 kilos, my dogs are 20. If I work the cattle up to 500 kilos, if one of those animals want to run over two of my dogs, I will let my dogs defend themselves with a little lick on the nose. As soon as that conversation's had, that animal retreats, I don't want our dogs just upsetting our stock anymore. Okay? That's not low stress dog handling. That's a tool, it should only be used as a tool in absolutely um, situations that require it. But we can use bark whenever we want. Let's chat. Jay, chat. So this is Jay, the left is a two year old um, dog I've been training for a while now. So um, we start our pups at eight weeks old, all we're looking for is some of that hunting instinct. By the time they're six to eight uh, months old, I'll let the dogs go clockwise and any clockwise without saying a word. Jay, can So if I walk any clockwise around my sheep, Jay will also walk any clockwise around his sheep. Go for that. And if I go clockwise, Jay will go clockwise. If I wanted to use the bar, Jay, 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 chat, Jay, chat, Jay, chat, 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 Jay, chat. Good boy, Jay, pack up, please. Jay, pack up. Good boy. Now, if I wanted to, this is Trick on the right hand side. She's, um, right, you open to. So we see Jay going side around there, and I did say a word. So, does anyone have a boss here that moves the goalposts on their staff occasionally? Right, I'm one of those bosses, right? Why can't, if I wanted to go and muster a paddock with my dogs, and instead of going through the same gate we go through all the time, today I want to go through that gate, I can't send my dogs a text message, an email, I can't message them on Facebook, I can't tell them, hey, we're going through that gate today. So at times I need to have a bit of control over their actions. And this is where I overlay a cue or a command over that behaviour. I, like to, I think the word command gets thrown around a lot, so I like to ask my dogs before I tell them. So I like to be asked before I tell them. So I differentiate that between my tone and pitch. Have you ever had an argument with your partner? It's not what you said, that was about how you said it. So if I ask them to do something that doesn't commit to it, I use dad words. Jay, come. Stop. Right. And then I can also pair that with a whistle. I can send you the other way. Left. Left. Stop. Jay okay, here. Good boy. Pack up, please. Thanks, Jay. So next here we have Trick. And I think I've got the message for now. How about we want to do everything with as less stress as possible, right? So sometimes our dogs, we have dogs that have got lots of desire and really want to get the job done. So those dogs, I'll put a little bit more control on them again, where I can actually bring us to come in and back them off on cue as well. So this is Trick, she's seven years old. She's traveling the state with me competing in sheep and cattle dog trials over the last seven years. 
She's not much of a caddy dog, but she's a very fairly handy sheep dog. So I can ask her to come in. Get in. As soon as those sheep get to the moving of her, trick it in. I can also ask her to get off. 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 Trick. Off. You can ask her to come back in. Now this is very handy when I mentioned about the dog not knowing what the job is, because I might move the dog first. So we call this off balance work. That's where the dog, I'm going to ask the dog to work off its natural instinct of bringing the stock directly to me. So just here, we're going to bring the sheep into a pen. So before the guys over here can shear, we have to get the sheep out of the paddock, through the yards, process them and then put them into the shearing chair. So what we'll do here, just bring the sheep in here. So we've got a pen here and then we've got a draft. The draft is where we sort sheep out. 